where do we fit in? What is this? How did we get here? You know, yeah. something's not adding up. Which brings us at last to the moment of truth. Until tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this Prague chat. I have with me Dream Machine, Doris and Matthew Melton. Welcome, guys, to the Prague chat. We're really excited to have you here. Prague Dog is, of course, mm -hmm. anticipating this. Actually, I have Sharky here as well. He's he's occasionally on my videos. Prague oh, Dog. Cool. We're honored to have everybody in. <laughs> the land shark. Yes. <laughs> Where are you based? Currently well, in Los Angeles, but we're actually relocating to Amsterdam. So we're going to be starting a new lineup there. And uh, we're very excited to uh, to begin in Amsterdam because it's where I grew up. It's new territory for Matt. Well, not entirely because he's toured a bunch. And it's where there. we met. It's, it's where, where we met. It's where it all began. So yeah. we get to go back to the, uh, the beginning. And that's cool. How long have you guys been together? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah. coming up on like 10 years. It's been August. a while. Yeah. yeah. We're just, the, the time <laughs> flies. You can't even yeah. keep count almost. It's, yeah. Long time. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you guys are both, uh, musicians, obviously you're, you're working together as musicians, but you're also a couple and that's really cool. And, and Matthew, you, you do a lot of producing, don't you produce other bands as well as yourself? You know, I've recorded bands for a long time and, uh, you know, like past few years haven't as much, but um, yeah, I, I love recording other bands. There's nothing quite as satisfying as somebody coming to the table with their vision, what they hear in their head and getting that to be what comes out of the speakers. I mean, that's like, you can't beat that. What could give you more sense of purpose than that? Making so you're making someone's dream come true. I mean, quite literally. So that's, but yeah, I mean, mostly we've just been doing our own stuff, you know, and um just chalking up some new song ideas and trying to make them come out into something. I was curious, you know, I, uh, I have your album. I love it. Obviously dream. Oh, you. Yo, you're welcome. And dream is <laughs> dream. Is, is Would you call it a concept album? Because I noticed dream obviously is coming up a lot in different lyrics. Was that uh, on purpose? Absolutely. A concept album. I mean, for us dream you know, people will see that and I think it's well, maybe that's like when you go to sleep at night and you're 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 having an argument with your second grade math teacher or something weird. <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. We're on like kind of this next wavelength. And uh, I don't know. What would you add to that? Yeah, I think. Well, it is a concept album in, in, in a sense. And the, all three of them are kind of part of one giant concept, I guess, because the illusion was us sort of commenting on you know, the, the veil that society has over itself, like the fourth, like breaking the fourth wall, I guess, and saying like, hey, you know, we, we're noticing that there's a certain inherent fakeness to things and, um, and then breaking the circles, breaking that, that wall, I guess, and then living the dream is um, the idea that the mind is more powerful than the material realm that we live in wow that kind of makes us and a concept band we're a concept band has anybody done <laughs> yeah, that before yeah. so it's sort of a, we're sort of a uh us versus society kind of band we're looking at society we're commenting where do we fit in what is this how did we get here you know yeah. something's not adding up we're not saying like oh we're above society or something but just no, like no. uh just kind of a curiosity as to like what does all of this mean, you know, and <laughs> well, we're observers, you know, we're looking at it and we're going, people are unhappy. They're ill. People are physically ill. They're ill. You know, so it's like you, you look at these things that are happening to people now and you can't help but say something's something's off, you know, like, why aren't we supposed to be at like the pinnacle of, of science and everybody should be cured. Right. But no, everybody's sicker than ever. So you have to factor that in what's going on with that. And then, yeah, just looking at society and what brings meaning into people's lives. Like, where are we at, you know, as a society? Mm -hmm. We live in a society. So, you know, <laughs> you have to wonder. Kanye West. What... <laughs> so we're so excited to get a, get the band back together and to be a, a, a band. Well, tell us a little about your YouTube uh, channel, because you've got, Doris, you do some amazing uh, synthesizer demo kind of videos. 
Last week, we did five classic synths of the 80s. This week, it's time for the 70s. As well as some ph philosophical, just, just chatting kind of little videos you've done too. Yeah, thanks. Well, yeah, I'm kind of, we're trying to both figure out mostly what the YouTube channel really is, because we've talked about that before, and we're not entirely sure what we're exactly aiming at, what kind of information or group of people or anything. It's just kind of what we're interested in talking about. And um, it's not always easy to make YouTube videos, you know, because it does take a lot of effort filming and editing and all that stuff. So obviously, we're not talking about everything all the time, but, you know, just a couple little things that, I don't know, just to entertain people and to uh, share what we're interested in and just kind of like make life lighter, I guess, just, you know, kind of and I mean, introduce stuff to people. We're <laughs> sort of unlikely YouTubers. We're not, we don't really have the personality to be YouTubers because we're really more introverted. You know, yeah. YouTube is an extroverts ball game, right? Because you can get in the front of the camera and go, hey, we're here. We're here at this thing. You can just start talking. Like, and, like, uh, you're, you mean like, like classic YouTubers who are like, hey, yeah. we're here. At, yeah. Well, you know, it's just, it's not necessarily in our wheelhouse. And actually, it's quite grueling and excruciating. Um, but, you know, <laughs> If you're an artist today, you need some type of platform. You need a headquarters where you exist. And, you know, so we chose YouTube and made it as our headquarters because it was uh, our own little domain, right? You know, you can say whatever you want. You can uh, be yourself. You can define yourself. You can experiment. You can have fun. And... <laughs> Tell us a little about your your tours that you've done in the past and, and that you're doing in the future. Well, yeah. we've got a few things in the works. We've um, we're going to really be obviously, you know, the past couple of years have been just a total wreck, you know, because you have everybody has to mention it. You know, you had 2020 and COVID and then it's like no go. And then 2021, 2022, it's just too much of a pain in the ass. You know, you could maybe sell half the tickets for a big room and then maybe it'll get canceled or maybe, but maybe the whole thing is canceled. You just don't, you know, so it's like, that wasn't really the time to jump in the water, but now you can go, you know, you can put the boats in the water. So really we're really, our eyes are set on 2023, 2024. That's when you'll see more of dream machine on stage. So yeah, I got some tours coming, so we won't disclose yet where, but they're, they're definitely fun places. <laughs> we'll keep you posted for sure. <laughs> cool. Cool. And do you, do you perform like as a duo ever, or do you usually have a, a full band? Well, we're putting together a band that'll be Dutch Amsterdam, Netherlands based. So that's kind of our real home territory. We lived there in 2017 and then moved back. We had a couple a couple orders of business to to take care of before we could actually start. So we're so excited to get a, get the band back together and to be a a, a band, you know, because obviously we're the core of the group. We're we're the songwriters, but you know, to have the band on, you know, yeah. then you're a gang. You have this. It's the most fun. Yeah, sure. it's just you can't beat. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Being in a band and touring, I mean, that's like the most rewarding thing anyone could do. I'm really curious what your influences are, uh, you know, as you evolved as a band or as individual musicians. Yeah. Do, do you want to answer that one? Or I'll to... start and then pass it to you okay. because, <laughs> you know, we, we come from different places musically, which is interesting. You know, I was born and raised in Memphis, grew up on soul records and punk rock. I was a punk rocker. Picture me with a mohawk. That's like, uh, you know, high school. Really? <laughs> listening to bands like you know i mean it started i mean it's memphis so you've got soul and that blues sort of thing that's in the in the dna of the whole city but you know i, I was like a punk rocker you know what i'm saying i mean i listened to like the exploited and stuff like that and then you know got more into like rock and roll. And um, that's what I eventually crafted into what I called smooth punk with my old band Bear Wires. Then I sort of went just totally power pop. I was like listening to the nerves and all the great power pop bands and, you know, just got onto that kick because I heard bands like um, The Quick and Milk and Cookies. And I was like, whoa, this is so cool. It was just 
it, it just hit me over the head. So that's what where I was at. And then I met Doris and she's coming from a whole nother perspective because she grew up classical and, you know, but then she had this whole vast knowledge of Prague and, um, and she introduced me to Prague music. I'd never really heard it. You know, <laughs> I remember in high school, there was a kid who had a, a, um, a back patch of Eloy or something. And I remember seeing it and go, well, that looks cool, but I just never explored. Really, Eloy? Yeah. It was something like that. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. pretty rare to the pretty rare uh, band to have a back patch, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, but <laughs> so what would you? Because he's like, yeah, I, I love Eloy. I, like that that dude's accent. Like I, I love it. He's like daughter of earth, <laughs> son, of, son of God. Yeah. So epic. He's yeah, Eloy rules. Uh, so I didn't know about any of that. She introduced me to all that stuff. Yeah. Um, we, uh, he actually introduced me to all the cool power pop stuff. So he, he, you know, I, I never we cross never pollinated a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like, a weird, it's like a combination of, cause Prague is essentially just classical music that's been amplified in, in one way or another. Well, you know, with vocals over it and stuff, but, uh, there's, there's a very classical element to it because it's constantly progressing and you listen to Bach and it's like, oh no, it's this part and that part. And so that, yeah, there's a lot of similarities with Prague um influences I would say that's a tough one I've always I've always kind of like tried to um to scan my brain because whenever I get asked that question I, I kind of blank out but then I think the most inspiring or influential things I would say for making music for me are like um things that have happened to people or stories or movies um that communicate some sort of feeling like uh, the feeling of being an underdog and, you know, being betrayed and that type of stuff. I, you know, it's like a childhood trauma that brings, it brings that up a little bit. And then I get inspired to, to do musical stuff. And then, but yeah, I think that the most stuff that we both resonate with is probably, yeah, just that combination of like lighter prog i guess sometimes prog can get a little crazy yeah you got to get your fuel <laughs> the fuel for making music from those experiences where you were burned by somebody or you had you were crushed by something that happened or you know something like that but i mean yeah. i feel like some of the prog stuff that that she turned me on to was like she was like hey check out this band atomic rooster uh <laughs> i know i need a breakthrough i'm on i got a breakthrough <laughs> Come on. <laughs> or uh like a uh, curved air you know she just show up and she's like have you heard of curved air i'm like no what's that you know like and uh so good you know all that stuff she turned me on to all that stuff you know and i i wasn't a prog i just never opened the the door you know but she opened the door for me and to that whole world the rabbit wow <laughs> Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. I'll throw, I'll trade punk and power pop for prog any day, man. You can fall into a box of prog records. Whoa. Oh yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. It's like, I've always joked around that like prog is for people who get bored with music because like once you've heard a million pop things, it's like, okay, I want more <laughs> stuff to happen, you know, or like. I totally agree to That's exactly, <laughs> that's what I've said before too. It's this people who it's not that we have a short attention span it's just that we have real hunger and appetite for for creativity no, man, we're, we're, we're more intelligent that's what it is we're, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like a it's like big brain well it makes you more intelligent for <laughs> sure i think it increases your well they say you know play babies classical music and that's good for their brains because it's intelligent music yeah, and, it, uh, it, it does progress literally. You know, it goes mm. to this and it blows your mind in a different way. And yeah, I saw something online that showed the IQ of different people who listen to different genres of music, and Prague was up there with classical because oh. it is, sim you know, similar <laughs> roots. And, All right. And, yeah. <laughs> so I know there's a the song on here. I, I think it was uh, one of the last two or three tracks. And there was a solo Doris did, which was very classically inspired. It was, you know, remember that one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's a good example of how uh, classical music really does seep into, you know, whatever you're doing. And besides uh, keyboards, what else do you guys 
uh, or Adora is. What else do you play? Are you strictly a keyboardist? Do you also play other instruments? Yeah, um, I strictly am keyboards. You know, I, I can't really play anything that would be worthwhile recording or um, performing. <laughs> okay, and Matthew, you play bass probably, right? Bass and guitar? And I can't play the piano to save my life. If oh, you set perfect. Me at, at a dinner party and said, play us a little something, I'd be like, I, got, true. I, I would be like, bink, bink, bink. That's not true. I, he comes true. up with melodies all the time. I mean, it's maybe just, just goofing around, but I cannot play the piano. I couldn't tell you what chord it is or anything about it, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I was self-taught and I can't even read music. But she knows music forwards and backwards, and she could flip it upside down and play it. Back so Dor Doris is uh Doris you can read music then obviously right yeah yeah okay so that's interesting it's a very di big contrast between you there too that you, one of you are fluent with musical uh, technology or not technology the music the, theory uh, or the theory music theory thanks and and then uh <laughs> Matthew you're self-taught uh how did that evolve that you got self-taught where did this all begin I mean you know I just grew up and grew up on the wrong side of the tracks in Memphis, Tennessee, with not a lot of resources growing up, kind of a kind of a non childhood, you know, kind of just a a, 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 a latch key type of thing. So I try and pull but we're both kind of pulling from the latch key energy of, you know, <laughs> We got something to prove. We were the underdog. Nobody told us you can do it. Go for your, you know, nobody told us, it. nobody told me anything, you know? So I'm just, I just organically developed it. But, you know, you see bands playing, you know, people playing guitar. Uh, growing up in Memphis, I saw, you know, like Jay Retard and the Lost Sounds and the Retards, you know, seeing these bands that were very crude and very visceral, like they're just smack, you know, just, bashing guitars, bashing drums, <laughs> knocking over synthesizers, you know, and I was like, wow, this is so cool. Cause I'd never even thought about, you know, performing like that of just really from the, really from the heart. And um, so I always, you know, just went with that and never bothered to learn it <laughs> and somehow <laughs> skated by cause I played for fairly simple stuff. Now I'm trying to work on up in my guitar skills and um, learn a little theory and, uh, she's helped me so much because, you know, yeah, I was basically like a uh, a, a crude mutant of <laughs> music. <laughs> you know, like... Well, it's cool, though, because whenever you play something on the uh, piano or guitar, I mean, you know, chords and stuff, you know, I know a little bit. But I mean, like, to... It's interesting because he'll play the piano in a way that like, you know, it's not technically according to, you know, the classist, annoying, elitist music teachers that I, you know, <laughs> would get lectured by every day. Uh, it would technically be incorrect, but he'll come Again. up. Again. Yeah, it, it sucked. I hated it. I hated every part of it. But like when Matt plays on the piano, he'll, he'll come up with a chord that like just is just a combination of notes that you wouldn't conventionally come up with i'm like what chord is that and it'll be like a hell of like a i don't know uh d minor suspended <laughs> with the seventh note or something like something crazy and it's like whoa this is cool and We're i wish that team. i could just We're erase team my... <laughs> yeah but it'd yeah. be cool to erase like what you know and relearn it in a different way you know yeah that, that's cool but we, for me at least we're a good team you know we compliment each other because I, I can go hey hang on a second what what would be a different chord that could go with this and she could say well you could do this you could do a uh <laughs> jiggity what's it seventh minor major <laughs> you know and i go oh yeah yeah that, that one's cool <laughs> you know we work together to, to to sort things out in songwriting and that's pretty cool now we'll move on to videos because really enjoyed some of your videos there's the one about the joining the cult you know and that what took place in the church <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was uh, very entertaining um, videos you make. And tell me a little about those. Tell me about those. Well, that is a real cult. We do have a um, secret. Well, not so Clubhouse. secret, but, you know, we have an exclusive <laughs> group of people and we talk about ideas and things. It's very open. It's very non-religious. But, yeah, it, it is a real life cult. Um, we're going to be coming <laughs> forth with more about that soon. Um, but... <laughs> From a faded dream. There's nothing more powerful than story, right? You need a narrative to to give viewers something to connect to and something that is just, you know, 
fun and entertaining. So we said, we'll make Doris a, um, a waif who's like a street urchin who's lost. And, and, you know, we're obviously poking fun at the fact that cults do, you know, cults as they're known, do prey on lost individuals, say looking for answers or, or like, um, like the Scientologists will get people in the subway. They'll say free stress test. Whoa, you're really stressed. Turn What's going on in your life? Revision. You know, like, let's talk. What, 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 what did dad say to you? They, they get in your psychology and they pull you in. But, um, not that I think that's a cult because, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, we, that's how you find people because those people who are lost need guidance of some sort. So that's how that music video was born. Basically just a story about that. We had some fun with it. And it's at a, it was at an old historic church in Los Angeles that was from what, 1916? Yeah, something like that. It was over 100 years old and it's pretty, it was cool to, to film it. And yeah, it's just, uh, we, we were teased by some people kind of saying like, yeah, you guys are like cultists or something like you have your own cult following. And then we, we thought, wouldn't it be funny to kind of, uh, you know, uh, stick it to the man <laughs> well, but, and then make the video that like, yeah, here you go. We are freaking Cultists. that's the funny thing right, we're, right, we're, right. we're so <laughs> autistic but yet we are underdogs who have something to prove but we're bringing the latchkey energy and when somebody says oh yeah they're just like some cult and we go like huh yeah, what we if we did are, start a cult? Yeah. and then we're like <laughs> you know and then like sometimes best be like we kind of are a cult and then it's like and then we'll, we'll take it <laughs> the next steps we'll go well wait a minute how do you start a religion do you get a tax right off with that like, why wouldn't we what, start what, 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 <laughs> so you need this what do you need to start so you know as we started researching it and we're like hey we can it's start our own idea. religion yeah. and then anybody who wants to hate us is anti-semitic they're they're a bigot you know so then we have a, a layer of protection from <laughs> from haters so we're so excited dream machines on the precipice of finally our true comeback you've been part of some controversy in the past i think i think us? it was on your no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, no. There was a video of you on Fox. They were interviewing Fox Television. Was interviewing you about some kind of thing. Yeah. I guess that's long in the past for you. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That was an interesting time. You know, um, we we made some comments, and ultimately, I think I was the the rebel rouser on that one. And I think for me the comments that I've made on feminism kind of stemmed from a, um, a sense of trauma as a kid. Cause I came kind of from a dysfunctional family where the mother wanted to, um, you know, she had this idea in her head, like I'm going to separate from my dad, you know, and, uh, be a single mom and it'll be awesome. And it was terrible. And it was the worst childhood. <laughs> well, a period of, of it was, was really bad. And, um, so I inherently, whenever I would get presented those ideas and people would regurgitate those ideas to me, you know, I, I just didn't want to accept those ideas. So I said something in an interview and, and ultimately I think that anybody who's an activist type uh, has some sort of trauma they're operating from, you know? And so in, in, in an effort to mitigate my trauma as a kid or the stuff that I've experienced with my mom and having a dysfunctional family, I was searching for that mother and father energy together. I want it together, you know, because feminism communicated something opposite of that to me. But in an effort to resolve it, I've been trying to really let go of that and say, you know what, I will be anybody's friend. I'm not going to operate from my past experiences and hate people based on their ideologies. We really have distanced ourselves from like that kind of perspective. And I think Austin was very, um, it wasn't a good place to be creative in, which you would think is the opposite situation because there's a lot of musicians and a lot of creativity going around. But like it is definitely like, a, you know, you must think a certain way, you know, like don't divert. Really? The politics yeah. gets so obnoxious. And at this point, we're so disgusted by politics. But at the same yeah. time, if somebody had loud politics, we wouldn't say get lost, you know, because we're kind of like. At this point, we don't yeah. care. I mean, the whole thing started, we were kind of just just goofing around, sort of poking at the matrix, if you will, just to see like <laughs> what you could say or what you can't say. And, a you lot know. of it was misconstrued. And it was too. the most random interview. 
Plus, you had a girl who's still learning English at that point, you know, or mastering the English, which has so many nuances. And people flipped out because they thought she was an American saying this. But once they realized that she was from war-torn Bosnia and immigrated to the Netherlands and then immigrated to marry me to the United States, it was like, okay, so she's a a multiple-time immigrant who was a refugee from a war-torn country it was like okay so she can comment on you know it it, it, it changed the 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 meaning of it yeah or i don't know well ultimately my comments were brash i will say you know when i re- reread that i was like you know i was being a little bit loud and you know like using certain word choices that were rude and could be misconstrued as <laughs> you know being bitchy i guess and um and you know i was just in a mode where i was just kind of saying whatever and i was operating from a perspective of like you know i'm so sick of these politics and i just want to say something of my own and i was punished for it heavily 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 and you know and i i got the point you don't say what you want to say and back in the 80s and 90s you wanted to be controversial now it's like, no, 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 we're good. We're good. You know, now you have to be good boys and good girls. And like, you can't say anything. You can't ever, you know, and it's just. That's interesting. Different. Yeah. That's quite contrasting. We're all pioneers yeah. in a, in a digital age of how things go. And um, yeah. but ultimately we don't care, you know, like if somebody wants to support a political candidate, we're not going to say we won't be your friend because you support them or something. We're not going to base somebody's entire existence off of like what, they believe in and and we we hope others to do the same of us and you know it's like we're we're chill and we've never cared about politics we've never endorsed a politician we've never even voted she can't she couldn't have voted for so long i can too. vote now she can so vote watch now out. but i'll be that one vote <laughs> See, you guys canceled me so here you know i'm just kidding but essentially <laughs> what that was that whole controversy was a hundred percent punk rock anti-establishment tarianism you know what i mean it was it was or i guess the, the right word would actually be um uh contrarianism it's like everybody's yeah. saying this well we'll say this and people how thought, you like them apples yeah you know? and people assumed that because we had the we expressed opinions we did that it was immediately like oh they're extremely like conservative or something like that but it was uh it was more of i don't know i think we would align more with being anarchists or, or Titoists, communists or something like yeah. we're not necessarily like any or even then as i say that i don't i'm not really an anarchist i don't care we're, i don't we're, freaking we're, care we're, we're, I, you yeah know, i know like, we're nothing we're, we're just anything we're just... <laughs> like so but you know if somebody says hey you want to go on national television and and say your piece and defend yourself and you, you have no voice otherwise it's like hell yeah i'm going on yeah they were know. the only ones who reached out to us and that pissed them off too because they were kind of saying like oh you went on Fox, so that means that you are automatically X, Y, and Z. And it's that it was like, like picking a side or something. Yeah. So then we got political energy, you know, uh, misdirected political animosity at us. Well, they're they support this candidate, and it's like it well, was so obnoxious. How do you, you yeah. know, Nobody... we never said that. So we could keep going, but essentially, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we, we got we got a lot about. Oh, go ahead. We got three minutes left, so. I, I don't want to cut you off abruptly. I hate to no, do that. But, yeah, you're but good. Uh, so in other words, you're trying to divorce the music from politics. You're just, you're just, you're just not involving the two because I don't get any sense of politics when I listen to your music or anything. Zero. Yeah. Sum up how things are going moving forward. What's, what's exciting on the horizons for you? Yeah, we're working on a new single. Um, we're also working on material for the fourth album. Um, we got some some new bandmates that we're excited to introduce into the Dream Machine sphere. <laughs> They're great dudes. So like, yeah, we're really excited to um, to be playing again. Uh, it was never really the right time, you know, with everything that happened. And now it's finally, you know, time to make a Oh, comeback. man, we're so <laughs> excited. Dream Machine's on the precipice of finally our true comeback because we just got a good head of steam. We have a lot of exciting opportunities coming in 23 and 24. So we couldn't be more excited to get back into the mix. Yeah. That's great. Why is it that you're so attracted to the sort of lo-fi analog recordings rather than all digital? Because there's an authenticity in there somewhere. Because the less options you have, the more 
authentic you have to record it, you know? So um, having the latest effects doesn't really appeal to us. We use the original effects, you know, they, they got it right. What, what do you need? A distortion, a chorus pedal, a delay, you know, that's all you need. And um, so, yeah, that the ability to record on analog is just, you can't fake it on analog, you know, cause the tape is rolling. It records you. Plus I could go down the, the rabbit hole of <laughs> why you would really want to record on tape, at least mostly. But um, I mean, we just love it. It just fits. You know, that thing where you do something, you're like, that's me. That just clicks. So I really appreciate this interview and I hope we can do another interview some other time and looking forward to your new single coming up and your tour. All, I wish you all well for that. And thank you so much for this interview, guys. See you later. Very cool. Yeah, Thanks thank so, much so much for having, having us. us. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was fun. <laughs> See you later. Prog dog. Bye, See you next dog. time. Yeah. Thing We're is, kind of coming in Courtney Love style. We're, we've we've been like <laughs> burning the candle at both ends and like. <laughs> <laughs> See, can you hear us? Hey. Oh yes, I can no. hear you and see you. Hello. It works for once. We do something <laughs> and it actually works. We're not supposed What's to not mention to a, oh. We're not supposed to mention a couple things just yet. Ah, oh, okay. that's right. That's the only thing. I love yeah. you got the prog dog. That's just such a great. That nobody is great. had the prog dog. Oh, he's dog. not here. Hold on. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. The prog dog. There oh, he is. Oh, that's him. See, like. If if uh, if we hadn't started with that other intro, you know, Camera, you would have never put the frog dog in. Oh, this was that would have been sad. Very special frog. No, wait a second. So yeah. sorry. We also can't mention that. Uh, Matt, I'm, you I'm blew it. Some. Okay, okay. Take. You gotta start again. Third time's a charm. Okay, this is a real okay. One. This is a real one. <clears throat> take take three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>